Hey guys, my name is MM and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about thyroid eye disease, which is a related condition to Graves' disease. Now thyroid eye disease goes by several names. So it goes by TED for short, or you may hear people call it Graves' eye disease, or in more technical parlance, Graves' orbitopathy or Graves' ophthalmopathy. So if you hear me use any of these terms interchangeably, or if you find that they use interchangeably when you're doing your own research, please don't get confused for talking about the same condition. And stick around till the end of this video because I'll be sharing some tips and tricks, you know, useful things that you can do to help improve your condition if you already have thyroid eye disease, or even if you don't have thyroid eye disease, they could be quite useful for someone else that you know and love who does. Now in my last video, you'll remember that I explained that when someone has Graves' disease, their body produces antibodies that attack their thyroid. And in about 25% to 50% of cases, including my own, those same antibodies attack your eyes. And this probably happens because there are proteins in the muscles and connective tissue within your eye sockets that look similar to your immune system as proteins in your thyroid. And so your immune system gets confused and it attacks your thyroid and attacks your eyes and it really is a big mess. Now, in terms of the most popular, you know, characteristics of thyroid eye disease, you may be familiar with um, Wendy Williams and how she has the bulgy eyes and she often looks like she's shocked. So I would say the bulgy eyes are the most characteristic symptom of Graves eye disease. Or if you're a fan of 90 Day Fiancé like I am, then you may be familiar with Ash from before the 90 days. And Ash got picked on a lot and people said he had serial killer eyes and he looked like he had, he did cocaine. And he went to see his healthcare provider and it turns out Ash actually has Graves' disease. Or you may remember this picture of me, which I'm gonna put somewhere up on the screen right about now. But anyway, from earlier in my Graves' disease journey, so you see how I always just looked shocked and like I was staring even when I was just looking normally. And this happens because in Graves' eye disease, your eyelids retract and your eyeballs are pushed forward in their sockets. And that's what creates this um, shock look. However, Thyroid eye disease can cause worse symptoms, you know, than the bulgy eyes. So there's the dryness and the irritation that comes with having dry eyes. There's also puffiness and there's pain and headaches and in some people, vision loss. So fortunately, it rarely causes blindness. However, if the swollen eye tissue starts to put pressure on the optic nerve, then it can actually lead to vision loss. And in some people, the bulging is so bad that they have to tape their eyes shut at night to sleep. So yeah, those cases can be really terrible. One important thing to mention about thyroid eye disease is that although it's related to Graves' disease in the sense that both conditions are caused by the same autoimmune attack, they are separate conditions. And by this, I mean that someone can have their Graves' disease go into remission and that's when their thyroid eye disease becomes active. Or some people can have thyroid eye disease before they have any noticeable symptoms of Graves' disease. And so the implication of this is that merely treating the thyroid won't necessarily treat the eye disease. So it's a separate condition that needs to be managed on its own. That said, I will say that since I started taking my anti-thyroid medication and making certain dietary and lifestyle changes, I've seen a dramatic improvement in my eyes. So my eyes are less bulgy, but I think even just compared with my last video, you'll notice that although one eye is still slightly bigger than the other, my eyes have improved. One of the biggest risk factors for Graves' eye disease is actually cigarette smoking. So for some reason, cigarette smokers tend to have the more severe forms of Graves' eye disease, thyroid eye disease. Again, I'm using <laughs> the terms interchangeably, but they tend to have more severe forms. So if you're a smoker, it could be worth, you know, seriously considering quitting. 
Another risk factor is radioactive iodine ablation or RAI. This is one of three major medical interventions that are used to treat Graves disease. And if you already have mild thyroid eye disease, having RAI could actually make things worse. Now, this isn't an argument for or against RAI. I'm not a medical doctor. It's simply, you know, a risk factor. And for that reason, it's worth knowing, you know, so that you can discuss this with your healthcare provider if it applies to you. Now, as promised, let's talk about the things that can actually be done if you have thyroid eye disease. And the first and most important thing to mention is that if you have thyroid eye disease, whether it's mild or moderate or severe, you absolutely, absolutely need to go see an eye doctor. And then the eye doctor can refer you to an ophthalmologist who specializes in thyroid eye disease if that's necessary. And this is very important because thyroid eye disease actually occurs in two phases. So there's the active phase, and in this phase, things are still changing. The disease is progressing. So you want to be monitored closely and regularly to make sure that there's no significant damage that's happening in your eye. And once, uh, so this phase tends to last about two to three years. And once you're out of that phase, then you enter into the remission phase. And in the remission phase, this is where any undesirable changes can be corrected. Now, treatment option wise, I'm just going to run through some things. Of course, these are things that you will have to discuss in depth with, you know, an eye doctor and someone who actually specializes in these things. But for more, say, um, severe cases of thyroid eye disease, there are, you know, steroid injections and um, radiation that can be used to manage the condition during the active phase. And then once the disease is in remission, there are um, that's where things like, you know, eyelid retraction and the bulging can be corrected. So there's eyelid surgery, you know, which can be used to fix the eyelid retraction. And there's also a procedure called orbital decompression, which can actually be used to reposition the eyeballs properly within the sockets. However, based on my research, orbital decompression seems to be reserved for more, you know, extreme cases where there is like actually you know, where function is affected. So if it's just, you know, for aesthetic purposes, eyelid surgery seems to do the job um, just fine. And, you know, if um, you're interested in these things, discuss them with your eye doctor, but I do hope that they give you hope that there are things that can be done, you know, if you have a more severe form of thyroid eye disease. You don't have to, um, you know, um, live forever not liking your eyes and feeling self-conscious about your eyes. Now, if you have mild, you know, or moderate form of thyroid eye disease, there aren't actually any, you know, medical interventions. The, what, what happens is that, you know, you monitor closely, symptoms like dryness get managed, but there's no treatment. And, you know, this is unfortunate because even if your thyroid eye disease is mild, it can really affect your, your confidence. And, you know, I can speak to that because I know it affected my confidence. And to some extent, like it still does. But there's a little bit of hope here though, because there's something called spontaneous reversal. And this can happen in some people with, you know, mild to moderate thyroid eye disease. So your eyes can just significantly improve spontaneously or they can go back to normal. And that's pretty amazing. Now this doesn't happen in the majority of cases. It only happens, you know, in a kind of small number of cases, maybe something like one to five. So if you have mild thyroid eye disease, what can you do proactively speaking? Personally, I like to be proactive about my health and it's not so easy to wait and see when you have a condition that affects your confidence. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is diet. So if you look up thyroid eye disease, you'll see that it's an inflammatory condition. And so to me, it makes sense to look into some form of anti-inflammatory diet. In my case, I follow a modified version of the payload diet, which is called AIP. And it's helpful not just for thyroid eye disease, but for Graves' disease and autoimmune diseases in general. And personally, I think it's one of the reasons why my eyes have improved so much in such a short space of time. So what's the harm in trying? I feel that even though spontaneous reversal only happens, you know, in a small percentage of people, maybe, you know, fixing your diet, reducing the inflammation in your body 
could increase the likelihood that it could happen for you. I'm not a doctor, but for me, logically speaking, I just don't think there's any harm in trying and what's the worst that could happen if you choose to eat a little bit healthier? Now, my second tip, and for me, like this is the coolest, is selenium supplementation. So look into selenium supplementation. There have been some really interesting studies looking at selenium supplementation for people with mild thyroid eye disease. So in a European study for from 2011, they gave a group of people with thyroid eye disease 100 micrograms of selenium supplements twice daily for six months. And there was an improvement. So they saw a decrease in eye involvement and they also saw that the supplements slowed the progression of thyroid eye disease. And this to me is pretty interesting stuff. As an added bonus, selenium also decreases autoantibodies in people with Graves' disease. So, I mean, check this out. Now, I will say that, um, you know, the studies done in selenium, there are some study design issues. They're imperfect. But for me, the results are interesting enough to consider them and the risk you know appears minimal and you know i'll explain why so selenium can be toxic in high doses however in the european study and in all the other studies i've seen on selenium supplementation for treating thyroid eye disease there haven't been any issues um with toxicity the issue is that these studies kind of always looked at people who are already selenium deficient so to what extent that had an impact, we don't know. And that could definitely, it's possible that they saw such a dramatic improvement because they were already selenium deficient. So if you're considering selenium, it could be worth checking your levels first, or at least starting a bit lower if you're not sure about your selenium levels. And I'm going to link, so the European study, I'm going to link that in the description box below, as well as all articles and, uh, you know, like scientific um papers that I used to make this video. So definitely check those out. If you're considering selenium supplementation, definitely worth a read. And of course, discuss this with your endocrinologist and your family doctor, your eye doctor. Discuss these things with them and make a decision that's right for you and not based on the contents of this video. Because again, I'm not a doctor. I just love to share cool stuff that I come across. Personally, I haven't tried selenium supplementation yet, but I'm definitely seriously considering it. So one of the reasons why I haven't tried selenium yet is because earlier in my great disease journey, I tested my levels and they were pretty good. And so I didn't bother. However, I would like <laughs> my, my normal eyes back. So and the risk to me, for me personally, it seems minimal, it's worth a try, provided you know I stay within 100 to 200 micrograms, micrograms a day range, and I don't take um, the supplements for more than six months, and I check my levels if need be. I think that for me personally, the risk is minimal. So would you like to see me, you know, try selenium out for thyroid eye disease and document my journey? Let me know in the comment section below. Another cool tip, and this is still on the selenium topic is Brazil nuts. So some people consider Brazil nuts to be a safer way to meet their daily, you know, recommended dose of selenium because technically it could take just one Brazil nut to meet your daily recommended allowance of selenium. However, there are no studies that actually show that Brazil nuts are an effective treatment for thyroid eye disease, whereas there are studies showing that selenium supplements could be helpful. Another thing to note is that, you know, depending on the soil that the Brazil nuts were grown in, so if the soil was selenium depleted, then the Brazil nuts may not have as much selenium as you'd expect them to have. For me, I'm following the AIP um, diet, as I mentioned earlier, and on the elimination phase of AIP, nuts aren't allowed. So I tend to get my selenium mostly from eating fish, seafood, and organ meats, especially beef liver. But I mean, Provided you don't have a nut allergy or anything, I'd say that the Brazil nuts are worth a try. Give them a go and if they work for you, definitely let me know. And quickly, before I wrap this video up, I want to share some products that I have been using that have been really helpful for me. So as part of having mild thyroid eye disease, you know, I've had a lot of dryness and the irritation that comes with that. And I have been using some artificial tears and this eye gel that were actually prescribed by my doctor. Um, again, I'm just sharing what has worked for me personally. 
if you try these products and they don't work for you, I can't be held responsible. I'm not a doctor, but I love to share cool stuff. And I mean, I think you can get these definitely at pharmacies in Lagos. So I know I've got them from MedPlus for sure. So you don't necessarily need a prescription to get them. So the first one is this um, Carmelo's um, Soothing Eye Drop. And it definitely is incredibly soothing, just as it says, preservative free. And whenever I can't find the Carmelo's, I get the Hyper Mellow's Eye Drops. And these are pretty good as well. And the third thing is this um, Carbomer Eye Gel. And this one is just amazing. It's really cool and just, yeah, really, really good. The other thing my eye doctor recommended was staying away from my contact lenses. And I did stay away from them for many, many months. So probably almost a year. But I've recently started wearing them again whenever I'm recording because it's just easier that way. And I haven't had any issues. And that's probably due to regular use of, you know, the artificial um, tears and the soothing eye gel that I just shared. And yeah, this video isn't sponsored or anything. Just sharing the products because they work for me and they may work for you. And yeah, so <laughs> this is the end of my video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm so grateful that I finally recorded this video. If you found this video informative in any way, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any friends or loved ones who are going through thyroid disease or autoimmune disease or Graves disease, please let them know about my channel because this is a space where we can get informed, involved and, you know, grow together. And yeah, like stay happy, stay healthy. Till next time. Bye.